Praise be to God, Father Clay Hunt here, the cowboy priest. And I want to tell you that we love you tremendously. That's why we laid down our life for you. That's been always the sentiment that was placed in my heart, even from my youth. And especially the cause and the reason of my vocation to the priesthood. And it has been my life, same as a priest, to lay down my life for God's people. And I do it gladly and willingly. And when God's people suffer, it gives a, a true and real suffering to my own heart. Meaning that it's hard to endure. It's hard to see. It's hard to accept. It weighs on me. But that's okay. That goes with the territory. That's what love requires. Sacrifice. And suffering. Ultimately, that's the, the essence of love. Love comes with a price. And here we are that we entered into the holy season of Lent. That's wonderful. And it's a, a great time. I love Lent. I rejoice that I have uh, with you walked out into the desert and Breathe deeply the heat of its heat and obviously it's nice in a way to step into the desert at first but it'll be bearing down on us but I encourage you give your best this holy Lent make some sacrifices I posted today on the Facebook the importance of fasting not a Facebook I don't have Facebook the Instagram the importance of fasting and uh, it's necessary to to be able to do that sometimes. And this time is is dedicated to that. To fasting, prayer, supplication, denial of self. I hope that you embrace the traditional observances of Lent. And that you do it with a certain zeal. Not by requirement or force not impelled for any other reason but out of love and desire for increase and that'll be good it'll produce fruit and i wanted to share some things with you as i always remind you the liturgy is is what moves the times and the seasons and the the reading for what they call Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday. This past Tuesday, the the uh, first reading was from the Book of Sirach, and it's a wonderful in, instruction. Sirach is a wisdom book, and this is a tremendous wisdom prepare yourselves for trials so the sacred author says my son when you come to serve the lord stand in justice and fear prepare yourselves for trials be sincere of heart and steadfast incline your ear and receive the word of understanding what a precious gift, the word of understanding that is surpassing to any material wealth of this world. To be able to have an ear to receive the word of understanding. Magnificent. Undisturbed be in time of adversity. Wait on God with patience, cling to Him, forsake Him not. Don't give up on the ways of the Lord, no matter how difficult the, the trials of our lives may be. Thus you will be wise in all your ways. Accept whatever befalls you. When sorrowful, be, bed, be steadfast and 
Sorrow seizes upon us and sometimes we cannot measure how heavy its weight will be or how long it will push down. But the, re the, re the reprieve of the Lord will certainly come. There will be a shift where the weight is, is moved off of us. And in fact, we are stronger for, for what we have endured. And so I encourage you, by the words of the sacred author, don't lose your desire to God. Don't lose your search for wisdom, your intention to possess wisdom. For in fire, gold and silver are tested. <laughs> and we want to be pure gold to God. So it has to be that we're tested. And it's only through fire that we are tested. And worthy people are tested in the crucible of humiliation. Sometimes we have to swallow humiliation. And, and that's why I encourage you not to, to be so ashamed of it. Or to avoid it at all costs. Trust God. And God will help you. Trust in Him. And He will direct your way. And keep the fear of the Lord. And grow old therein. Wisdom sayings. You who fear the Lord. Wait for His mercy. Turn not away. Lest you fall. Meaning when, when, when you're in the, the intensity of suffering, don't just give up or don't just go for a little while and then, and then give up because you will fall. But persevere in what you do for the Lord. And your reward will not be lost. You who fear the Lord, hope for good things for lasting joy and mercy you who fear the lord love him and your hearts will be enlightened study if you will the generations long past and understand has anyone hoped in the lord and been disappointed has anyone persevered in his commandments and been forsaken has anyone called upon the Lord and been rebuffed no for compassionate and merciful is the Lord he saves in time of trouble he is our protector and that's why we seek him in truth what a magnificent encouragement and we do commit our lives and we hope to the Lord <laughs> And as I see so many people give up and it weighs down upon me, as I see, as the psalmist would say, a thousand fall at my side, 10,000 at my right. I am impelled to remind you of how to be in here to God. Let, you, let your, your understanding be reminded and instructed anew in truth. The gospel from today, the liturgy in the first day after Ash Wednesday, Thursday after Ash Wednesday, from the gospel of St. Luke. Jesus told his disciples of himself, the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Well, that's interesting in itself. Who were the ones who killed the Lord? <laughs> My goodness. The last place that we should expect persecution from. The last place that we should expect uh, to be betrayed from. But that's why... That's why Jesus would say when they called him good teacher, he said, there's only one who's good. That's my heavenly father. Because we can't, we can't really depend upon anything of this earth. And although it should be that we could trust to things, ultimately the only one we can trust to is the Lord himself. 
and we put ourselves at risk a lot of times in loving people, but our ultimate trust is always to God and He alone. He said to all those who were listening, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. He must take up his cross daily and follow me. So that's the essence of what it means to be a Christian, to deny ourselves, to take up our cross each day and to follow him. And that means to the Via Dolorosa. That's the way he walked, the way of suffering. And that's why it is necessary for us to embrace the crosses of our life, whatever they may be. And they're different to every person, but nonetheless, they are the cross. Whoever wishes to save his own life will lose it. <laughs> I laugh at people who said, they say in this world, you know, well, I got to look out for my own health. I got to look out for my own life because I, you know, because of, of these things that I'm worried about. That's why I have to do this. What a cop out. You never heard the Lord say like that. What comes first is the truth to God. And when suffering and hardship presents itself to us, we have to be the one to shoulder it, to pick it up and to carry the cross, not to throw it off. That's why many, many people from this time are going to lose eternal life. And obstinately, you know, you can tell people all the time, but they're obstinate to it. They insist to their own way which has always been the freedom of the human person, but that's a dead-end road. Whoever loses his life for my sake, says the Lord, will save it. And what, what does it profit? You know, people do their, they hedge their own bets and they, uh, they set the scales in their favor and all that kind of stuff. What's the last line of the gospel today? Jesus said, what does it profit for one to gain even the whole world and to lose his soul? Absolute foolishness. But there are many people who insist to walk that, own, that, that road. They insist to walk the road of selfishness. Whether, rather than self-sacrifice. And that's sad. So I encourage you, if you do have the ears to hear, the eyes to see, the mind to understand, to renew your faith and devotion to God very deeply on this Holy Lent. And to exercise the helps that God has given to us. And namely, that is the sacraments. That means the most important thing for you to do in Lent is to go to the Holy Confession and to renew your devotion to the Holy Eucharist. That's the most important thing that you can do for Lent. And then if you have the courage and the bravado to wade into the deep waters of prayer and fasting, go for it. And tomorrow is actually the first opportunity that you have to do that because it is traditional in the life of the church that Friday is a day of fasting. Not only abstinence, not to just abstain from meat, but to make a real fast. And the traditional fast is bread and water. You can do it. It's not going to kill you. <laughs> I always remember that one guy I was with. And we had just entered into Lent one year. And, and I told him uh, we went to grab something to eat. And I told him it, it was probably on the Thursday after Ash Wednesday. And I told him, can I get you a Coke? And he was like, well, I gave up Coke for Lent, but I'll take a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I encourage you to 
to give up something of substance you know to make to make a sacrifice of substance for the lord and another traditional prayer in the life of the church is the stations of the cross on fridays of lent so i encourage you to hang tough to those great traditions even a especially in the midst of these ridiculous days of what they call the cancel culture. <laughs> I can't wait till the Lord cancels the world again. We need the Lord. I want to tell you I love you. I encourage you. And we give you a little blessing here. The Lord be with you. And through the intercession of all the holy ones who have gone before us, and especially the greatest person of faith ever, our Blessed Mother Mary, May Almighty God bless you and yours and your family in this Holy Lent. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Adios. Bye.